Okay, so this is an example of an invasive carcinoma, no special type of the breast. Okay, so invasive cancer NSD, also known as invasive ductal carcinoma of the breast, which is um, the commonest type of primary breast carcinoma. So you can see um, that this tumor is quite irregular. Okay, and in areas we can see the infiltrative border going into the adjacent fat. Um, scroll around a little bit again here you can see tumor going into fat and we have some uh, residual benign breast parenchyma adjacent to it as well on low power I think you can appreciate that the tumor looks very very blue okay and this is partially because um, when the tumor is quite cellular and you know that as with a lot of um, malignant tumors the tumor cells tend to have very um, large and hyperchromatic nuclei so that contributes to it being blue but in this particular tumor there is also quite a lot of lymphoid um, infiltrate associated with it okay so that contributes to the appearance of it being slightly darker than usual in terms of the arrangement of the tumor you can see quite variation in architecture if I just focus maybe in and around here we can see that some of these tumor just forms like irregular cords um, and then at the edge here again irregular cords and then some form like smaller clusters um, and then in areas they just seem to 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 be arranged in sort of irregular sheets just lots and lots of tumor cells okay but what is striking is wherever you go um, you hardly see any tubule formation okay and that's an important criteria when you are reporting a primary breast carcinoma because you probably know or you probably don't know that the grading for breast carcinoma um, requires you to identify and quantify the amount of tubule formation present okay so we give that a tubule score and then uh, you look at the nuclear features and you give that a pleomorphism score and then you also count the mitosis to give you a my mitosis score and then you add up all the scores and then with that you get to stratify uh, or grade the tumor into either grade one two or three so um, i'll direct you to read that on your own and it's called the modified bloom richardson um, grading system so anyway um, with minimal to none uh, tubule formation then this will be a score three okay so probably a hint of tubule formation there but not not um, a very good one at that so that's tubule formation okay so probably there as well you can see a lumen formation there but still very minimal so a score three and then next we look at nuclear pleomorphism Okay, so nuclear pleomorphism, as you know, um, we want to look at the variation in the size and the shape of the tumor cells. And as you go along, you can see like overall the tumor is quite large. Um, and then, like for example, here you have a large tumor cell with coarse chromatin multiple nucleoli. And if you compare this one to um, this tumor cells next to it, so this one is probably double or triple the size. So there's quite a lot of variation in the size and shape um, of the tumor cells. And you appreciate that better as you go um, around. Like for example here and then here it seems to be like a multinucleated one. Okay. So in terms of pleomorphism score, you could probably give this a 3 as well. And then in order to um, give a mitos mitosis score, you actually need to know your field diameter. Um, and also you need to quantify the number of um, mitoses that are present um, and mitoses um, are counted based on per high power field so if you look at the um, any given high power field so it's quite difficult to do it uh, on virtual microscopy because you don't know the field diameter of the field you're looking at but if you look at it under your conventional microscope then you should be able to um, quantify that fairly accurately. I'm trying to find a couple of mitoses. Um, uh, for example, there's one there, okay, with fuzzy border. So you need to count how many of them and then give a total score. Okay, so we're not going to um, delve into that a little bit further here. Um, another feature that is present in this particular section is that this um, case also has several foci of lymphovascular space invasion. Okay, so this is 
a lymphovascular space and you can see it's lined by endothelial cells and you see tumor within it um, and here's probably another one okay so space and tumor and here's another one as well space and tumor okay so that is the basic thing about reporting invasive carcinoma of the breast additional findings in here is that you can see a central area of necrosis um, you can see that there is some uh, cellular ghost outlines present but lacking nuclei so this is some sort of coagulative necrosis um, probably due to the large size and therefore lack of vascular supply and subsequent cell death okay so other things you should do when you're reporting this is you need to measure the size of the tumor okay so usually we do that grossly um, but you can do that microscopically as well in small tumors so the size of that will also contribute to the cnm staging the other thing as well which is not present here is um, to identify the presence of in situ carcinoma so in this case dcis um, and you grade that either low grade medium or um, high grade but again it's not present in this particular case so this is just an example of invasive ductal carcinoma of the breast